And I'm joined now for Democratic Reaction by House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn of South Carolina. Well, you've seen a lot of action on the Hill over the decades, but I don't know that we've ever seen anything like this. A voice vote that barely took minutes. Some of the Republicans hadn't even arrived in the door. They were in such a hurry to get it over with and get her out the door. And her declaring to Savannah Guthrie that she wants to be the leader of an opposition party uh, to restore the Republican Party against Donald Trump. Well, thank you very much for having me, Angela. I, no, I, I have not seen anything like this. Uh, but we're living in some people are doing and saying things that uh, have never been done before. And so I suspect uh, that um, uh, we are going to have some real difficult uh, deliberations between uh, both sides going forward. I would hope, though, that um, uh, the Republican Party will remain a valuable party. Uh, keeping the country in mind. I agree with her when it comes to that. These issues that we are faced with today, COVID-19 and this aftermath, what to do about our crumbling infrastructure, what we do to get uh, children back in schools, these things ought to be done in a bipartisan way with both parties working on different philosophies and not arguing over the past. How do you work with Kevin McCarthy as the Republican leader when, and he's at the White House right now, sitting with the president, he doesn't even acknowledge that Joe Biden is the legitimately elected president. How does that work? Well, it doesn't work too well. And I think that's going to be a problem for us. That's my point. Uh, I think we ought to get the past behind us. The election is over. And nobody is going to kick Joe Biden out of the White House. And for us to still be arguing over what we know to be one of the biggest lies ever told uh, by uh, any American in this country. It reminds me so much uh, of Adolf Hitler sitting in the stands waiting for Jesse Owens to fulfill his philosophy uh, of black folks being inferior and storming out of the building when Jesse Owens won the race. Well, I think that Kevin McCarthy is going to have, and Donald Trump will have some similar experiences this and next year. Well, meanwhile, the Republicans in 12 states have passed new voting restrictions this year, including Arizona and Florida this week. A key Senate committee deadlocked, unable to send uh, the House passed bill on voting rights to the floor. That's going to make it a lot harder to get this all back on track. Well, it's not going to be easy. Uh, but I, I don't think any of us came here looking for easy work. We know that what we got to do for this country, uh, especially in this uh, current climate, is going to be hard to do. But it's the kind of thing that we've got to do. We've got to work hard uh, and get it done. And I do believe in the final analysis, uh, that 9-9 vote, uh, this issue will end up on the floor. And I do believe it may take uh, the vice president casting a vote but I think we're going to get in a good place uh, and we'll be able to pass that legislation. Because once again, uh, our democracy is teetering on edge. And everybody knows that. And the majority of the American people have got great faith and confidence in this president. 63% approval rating and uh, to have a majority of Republicans, uh, Republican voters, agreeing with this program. I think we're going to get to where we need to be, irrespective of the partisan shenanigans that are taking place in the Senate. Now, you've got a couple of uh, breaking news on the on the economic front. Consumer prices jumping by more than four percent, according to new numbers just out this morning. How are you? How concerned are you about inflation? Well, inflation is always a concern, and you always, and that's why we got uh, the Feds there. And I think. Uh, Chairman Powell uh, is keeping his eye on this, and I think the Fed will intervene if they need uh, to intervene. Uh, so that's always a concern. But I would much rather that being the concern than the seeing uh, people in soup lines. And I was just also wanted to ask you about police reform, because uh, the compromise is apparently work working towards some sort of conclusion. 
Would you accept a compromise on police reform that had what you want on chokeholds and on no-knock warrants, but did not include uh, changing the immunity for police officers? It must include that. I think the people misunderstood what I said the other day. When I said that a half loaf is better than no loaf at all, well, no loaf is keeping things as they are. The full loaf uh, is the elimination uh, of um, uh, immunity. The half loaf to me is finding a way between those two places of getting a compromise that everybody can live with. The problem we've got is qualified immunity has always been determined to be absolute immunity. When I consult uh, the law dictionary, uh, qualified means uh, partial. It means limited. It doesn't mean absolute. And so what I think we need to do is find out where we can get between what is today and the elimination, which is what I would want. To me, that's the full loaf, getting rid of it. But if we can't get rid of it, then my old idea is let's look at qualified, give it the proper definition so that we can move forward with this and everybody will have confidence in law enforcement. That's the problem we've got now. People are losing confidence in law enforcement. I don't want us to lose confidence in law enforcement. I want that profession to stay true to what it is, to serve and protect, not to beat up on, uh, not to desert, but to serve and protect. Congressman Jim Clyburn, as always, thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.